Live. I am joined today with my son Owen. He is 11 years Hello. old and he is joining us today because we are going to talk a little bit about summer reading with kids. Um, we are, today is our official very first day of summer. Uh, the kids had two half days, Monday and Tuesday, and so today is the official first day of um, of summer. And so we started out a little slow. On Wednesdays, I normally try to do my Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and um, we made crepes and enjoyed breakfast this morning, and so we had a lovely slow uh, morning this morning. And so it's just actually the two of us at home. Uh, our, uh, everybody's gone, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's gone, so it's just the two of us. So, uh, anyway, we were talking about summer reading and uh, what we could read, and I said, well, why don't you join me on this Facebook Live, and we'll talk about a few of the books that you love, some of the stuff that you're reading, um, <clears throat> because this is kind of a popular discussion that we have sometimes on, um, that I'll see on Facebook. People will say, well, what are your kids reading? What can we read? What are good books to get? Um, and I have written a few posts on it um, using books that we've read, but I thought we'd chat about it and hear from, from Owen specifically. And then um, I have some books in this pile too that I'm reading and some stuff that maybe you are picking up too. So um, anyway, we're going to chat about that. But first I wanted to um, not gloss over the fact that yesterday I was fasting um, and I have been talking a lot about the East African famine and so I wanted to share a little bit about that and where my heart is and um, and that, that just because uh, I am moving on to other topics doesn't mean that it is not um, consuming me or that it's something that, uh, that I enjoy um, speaking about and so uh, the East African famine was is something that is on my heart because it is it's not being talked about right now and um, it's something that we need to be aware of and so um, it is even worse than the famine in Ethiopia back in the 80s uh, which is sparked the we are the world and all those other things and so this is actually one of the worst um, famines that is happening. Uh, do you have anything that you know about the East African famine that you want to tell us about? Uh, there was a boy who took care of all of his, um, animals, and he had a sheep in specific that, uh, he especially liked, and, um, when all of his animals died, including that sheep, he just felt hopeless. He was pretty sad and hopeless, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so this little boy, um, has pretty much lost all of his hope, and this is not uncommon for, um for most of those people in the area, they've lost a whole lot of hope. And so if you've seen some of those pictures where they're holding up animal carcasses and uh, they know that the animals have gone and they are next. And so this is pretty dire circumstance. So um, I still have all the links on my blog if you'd like to uh, donate specifically to that or if you would like to sponsor a child uh, in Ethiopia or Kenya. Those are the two places right now where they actually do have child sponsorships and they're working on some more in that area. But that is the absolute best way that you can help out um, to create long-term sustainability in those areas uh, is through child sponsorship. So I recommend child sponsorship. Um, though if you do want to just give uh, to the crisis right now, donating your money, there is a way that your gift can be multiplied seven times. And so it makes a huge difference. If you donate $10, uh, it's a $70 gift just because of matching grants. So let's talk about reading. All right. So first up in our stack that has absolutely no, no order. So I apologize profusely, but we're just going to run through them. Um, Owen, what do you know about this book? It's Scorpio Races. Do you know anything about it? Okay, he knows nothing about this. I have this on my list. It is a young adult book, and I bought it for my daughter who decided she didn't want to read it, and so it ended up in our like Goodwill get rid of bag, and I was like, no, 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 I wanted to read this. My mother-in-law's read this, and um, my some a family friend of ours who works at like Barnes & Noble um, was reading this as well, and so they highly recommend this, and so I thought, this is awesome. Um, uh, I, I've heard really great things about it, and so I want to, I wanted to read it personally, and so I kept it out of the Goodwill pile because I think I'm going to read it this summer, and if I like it enough and think it's appropriate enough, I think this little guy might read it. But I think it's fantasy, which is why I never really picked it up because I'm not much of a fantasy person, but um, I'm excited to read it. I've heard it's good. Um, these books. What do you know about these books? They're funny. Judy Bloom, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Fudge, Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing, Double Fudge, and Sheila, otherwise known as Sheila the Great. These are, like, some of the best, like, these are some of the first books that we read 
to our kids too, and then read individually. Mm -hmm. But so I would, if you've got a kid, how old do you think a kid would be that would read these? Seven-ish. Seven-ish, eight, something like that. These are awesome books for kids like around that age, like second, third grade, um, to either read on their own or to, um, to read out loud. Um, we absolutely love, love, love these Judy Bloom books. Um, it's, they're just a fun, they're a fun book. And so actually I just dug these out of the box that I have saved for books that I'm actually going to save. And there's not very many of them, but, but these are some of them. I will save our Dr. Seuss books and I'm going to save, um, our Judy Bloom books because I just love them. Um, one day I'm sure I'll read them with my grandchildren, so I'm excited about it. All right, what's next? Uh, Love Does. Okay. Uh, it's a book about how uh, this guy has a real experience and uh, how God is working through him. And it's a pretty cool book. It was a cool book. So Love Does. I wanted to read this one too because I just um, listened to an interview of this guy's um, wife. Um, she was on a podcast that I listened to um, at the Jimmy uh, Ivy Happy Hour. And I actually really liked her. Um, but this is kind of... Uh, he, you read this... It was a camp counselor read it to you, right? Yeah, yeah a couple so. years ago. Yeah, at camp. And so this was a book that they read as a group. And so this is kind of cool um, that he liked it. And then I think it's a, I think it's appropriate for um, a lot of all ages. And so it's kind of a, a fun, sweet one. What about the next one? The One and Only Island. Best book, right? That was a pretty good book. It was a really good book. And actually, it's local, right? Mm -hmm. Ivan was a gorilla that was um, left in a... Uh, like a B and I thing or something like that. Is that what it was? Like a B and I. It was like a like a flea market kind of store. It was ran mm -hmm. totally random, but um, people could go and visit him. This this gorilla. And actually, my father in law remembers going to visit this gorilla because it was it was local. It's in Tacoma, um, and then it's told from the perspective of Ivan the gorilla. And we actually read this one aloud too. Mm -hmm. This one was a good read aloud book. It's also a good individual book too. Um, I have heard that Disney bought the rights, and so, or maybe it was Pixar, Disney, I think they're all the same thing, um, and it will be turning into a movie, only because we went to see this author uh, at the library. She was really cool, um, and talked a little bit about this book, and so um, we really like this one. If I have to recommend a book a lot of times to kids, it's it's this one. If I if kids, if parents are like, I don't know if I can find it, my kids don't like to read, read this one. This one's just a really sweet, good book. That's a good one. All right, what's next, bud? Uh, the I Survive series. Mmm, that's a good one. Yeah, it was my favorite one. Yes, that one's your favorite one? Uh -huh. Out of all of them? Okay, why do you like The I Survived? Uh, I don't know. It's like an exciting, um, survival book. And it's sort of what got me into chapter books. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good way, mm -hmm. good introduction into them. They're not very long, right? No. Do they have pictures? Uh, a little. They have a few pictures? Yeah. Uh, this one doesn't have many. Okay, so not too many. And they're kind of based on, on events, right? Mm -hmm. They're based on real life events. And so um, so they're kind of interesting historical events too. So kids, especially boys, I found really enjoy these. But I think I think your sister liked them too when she was reading mm -hmm. them too. They came out after, I don't think our, our oldest read any of them, but um, he was more into the, what is that series? Harry Potter? Nope, the other one with the lady who writes all the books and the tree, Magic Treehouse? Yeah. He was really into Magic Treehouse, and I don't think you guys really got into those as much. Okay, what's our next set? Uh, The Land of Stories. Okay, so we have the first three. Um, we actually, I just heard the other day there's six of them. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think we've only read three, right? I only thought there was five. Oh, whatever. Okay, so Chris Colfer wrote these books. He's the guy from Glee. Our, uh, did... We read these out loud, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was another book that we read out loud together um, before bedtime and really liked them. And I would recommend these to a lot of kids um, that that like books especially, right? Like mm -hmm. kids. Like fantasy. Like fantasy, yeah. Because it's a, it's a little bit about how, um, like, story self. About how, like, the story stuff, like, uh, what is it? Like ha fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Fairy tales, yes. And how the fairy tales kind of came into play and how the fairy, they kind of come up to life. And it also kind of feels like it goes a little bit like, what's that TV show you've been watching once? Oh, Once Upon a Time. Is it kind of similar to this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, kind of this similar kind of idea. So if adults like that Once Upon a Time series, or if any of your kids have actually seen it, they may also like these. We actually have these ready. We're going to pass them on to, um, to a cousin because she wants to read those too. So those are good books. 
Um, you also said you couldn't find a book and you were looking for one. And what uh, was the book called? Project 1065. That yeah. was, that's probably my favorite book. Ever, of all time. Mm -hmm. Okay, and tell us why it's your favorite. Uh, it's about World War II and um, a Irish spy goes in and he's trying to get the jet fighter plans uh, and how all of these kids are trying to stop him and how it's a pretty cool book. So that was one of your favorites. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're kind of into that, like, historical fiction right now, though. Yeah. You're reading a lot of the stuff about World War II and Hitler and the Nazis and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You just read something about Hitler, too, that we've got to uh, take back to the library. Making Bombs for Hitler. Did you like that? Yeah, that was good. That was good, too. Yeah. So, again, these are kind of sensitive topics. If your kids, um, some of them, you've just got to understand how your kids can process some of those things. Um... Sometimes it's just making sure you can have conversations about those things, like understanding about world events um, and that bad things happen um, it, to, to good people. I mean, really, there's a lot of things that there's death in the world and that there's it, and there's things that, you know, that sometimes kids have a hard time processing. So just making sure that you have time to process those with your children as well if they're reading in a book. Um, these are kind of books that I was reading. I have to return this to the library because I didn't have a time, but if you are looking for a fun beach read, I love this author. Actually, I haven't, this is, I think, her new book, and I haven't actually read it, so, um, I just didn't get time. Um, this I just picked up at a garage sale. I wanted, um, my kiddo to read it because I read this a couple years ago, and if people are looking for books, you know how you'll see those Facebook friends will say, I'm looking for a beach read this summer. This one is usually the first one I recommend. It's a good, easy read. Um, historical fiction, again, told from two different perspectives. Um, but I, um, I loved this book. It was really, really good. And I think I devoured it in, like, just a few, um, a few minutes. And then this one I just finished reading. It's due back to the library today, which is why we started talking about books, because we were talking about going to the library, and today's the first day of summer, and how we need to do... Uh, the Returning, and so Hillbilly Elegy, I know I mentioned it last week when I said I was starting to read it. Um, I have finished it now. I read it. it just reminds me a lot of kind of where I grew up in Indiana, and so um, if you, it, it, it's kind of interesting because it, it blends like sociology with this kind of memoir kind of thing. Um, it's inter it's really interesting. Um, so it's due back today, and so I told my husband he needs to put it on hold so he can read it too, because I think it's a good, interesting read to understand a little bit more about, like, that area of America. And so if you're from, like, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio kind of areas, um, it kind of is an interesting, insightful, um, insightful book. I liked it. Um, any other books that you would recommend if you've got kids who are... I don't know, either younger than you or getting to be your age. What would you recommend? Uh, Lost in the Pacific. Oh, yes, that one you said was a good one, too. It was about a bomber that uh, ran out of fuel when they were trying to find uh, the airport, and they had to crash land in the sea. And it's a true story about how they um, had to uh, get out and how they floated for a few, I think it was like almost a month mm. on tiny rafts. Yeah. Just waiting to be found. So that one sounded a lot like Unbroken to me, and as an adult I read Unbroken, um, and I have recommended it to other, lots of other people, so if you have not read Unbroken, read that. Don't watch the movie, don't bother with it, but the book is fabulous, um, and I did tell Owen that if he'd like to read it, he could read it. I feel like there are some sensitive topics in it, but again, if you have conversations about it and talk about um, those kinds of things happening in the book, it's, it's actually a really, really good book um, as well. But know your kids, know what their reading levels are. Um, when I was growing up, my mom always did a penny a page during the summer. So we kept really good track about our books that we would read, and we would get a penny a page um, during the summer. And so we've done that with our kids for the past few summers. Some days, summers were better at keeping track than others, and some summers were not very good. But this summer, we're going to have a... I'll have the printout. I made a printout a few years ago, and I offered it on the blog. So um, I'll link up to that again, and then uh, we're going to use that again this summer because we have started a time where just the two of us in the afternoon around 3.30 to 4, every single day we say, okay, it's reading time, and so we'll sit down and take a half an hour just to read. And so um, so that was a good time to just sit down. And we've done that the past couple of days, and so hopefully we'll continue that throughout the summer because I really liked that um, that reading time. We'll just kind of curl up on the couch together, and he'll read and I'll read. And and we, our brains don't turn to mush, right? Okay, cool. All right, do you have any other books? Mm -mm. All right, I have a list of other books that I would recommend, things that we didn't talk about um, on the blog today, but reading is super awesome, super important, and I find the more and more 
uh, that devices come in front of us and kids are scrolling like this, the less and less reading that's being done. And so um, it, it's just such an important thing to remember to, um, to get off the devices and open up those books because those books are so important. And I am guilty of it too. I know that I read absolutely far less than I used to because I have like an iPhone that I just scroll through at night. Um, versus just opening up a book at night where I would just sit and read for 45 minutes. So um, we have to be intentional about reading. It's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Books are awesome, right? Yep. Books are good. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. I hope you came away with some new ideas. We'll talk soon. See ya.